An important part of SimWriter are the environments or on-screen grids for writing. This video will just draw your attention to key new features. If you're not familiar with making environments, then I suggest it might be better if you looked at the Getting Started, Help Sheets and Videos. The new SimWriter 2 environments are saved with a thumbnail image that is created when you save the environment, making it much easier to see which activity is which. You can tell the difference between the SimWriter 1 and the SimWriter 2 because SimWriter 1 still have the original icon with them. You can open a SimWriter 1 environment into SimWriter 2, but not the other way round. When designing an environment, you will find there are quite a number of significant improvements. When you set the appearance of your first grid, those settings become the session default, including your choice of shadows or not. Similarly, if you set the stage properties, those also become the default for any new stages. So any new stage I make will have the same appearance as will any new grid, making it very easy to get a consistent style across your environment. As well as inserting rows and columns, you can now stretch individual columns by highlighting a particular cell and then when you stretch, those are the ones that are changed. You can also split a cell horizontally or vertically to make very complex layouts if you wish. You can now also tab through the cells on your grid to make it much quicker to enter content and shift tab will take you back again. Linking of grids is much simpler. When I want to add a new grid, I can choose to either add a new grid unlinked, or I can link it from this cell, or I could link it from this cell with a back button. If I was making a cascading style of environment with perhaps a menu page at the top, I would link from this cell with a back button. This environment with a sequential set of grids, I would link from this cell. And when I look in the grid viewer, I can now see that that cell has been coloured with my chosen link colour. And that's all you have to do to make a sequential series of grids for an activity. There are a few new things that you could do to help get the sizing just right across all of your cells and grids. You can click in a cell and make the symbols and text smaller or larger. But in this cell, the text is at its maximum size and I want to make that graphic as big as I can as well. So by holding on shift and increasing the symbol size, I can make that graphic as big as the space will allow. I can now use the Format Painter to make the size of both the text and graphics consistent across all of my grid. I first click on the Format Picker and that saves that setting and then I can use the Format Painter to apply that setting to the other cells on this grid. And if I wish, I can go back to all of my grids and apply the same style, getting a consistent appearance throughout the entire environment. There are a few extra features when adding actions to a cell, as well as being able to multiply select cells, holding down Control, and edit the actions. I have a list of the recently used actions which will gradually build up as I use the program with my favourites to save you searching through the complete list of all of the actions. I can also copy all of these and that would allow me to paste it to any cells that I want to. So if I want to go to my next grid 
and edit the actions for these cells and click paste, those actions will now be added to all of those cells, once again making it much easier and much quicker to make the environment do just what you need. Those are the main new features of making environments, but there are a number of other videos and help sheets that will take you through the detail. And in particular, there are some extra features about switch scanning and setting those options.